This is the Photography Is My Passion podcast, episode five. In this episode, we're going to talk about the Pareto Principle. Okay, what is the Pareto Principle and how can it help you with your photography? Well, first of all, a little history. The turn of the last century, I'm talking the late 1890s, there was an Italian economist, I think his name was Vilfredo Pareto, and he came to the realization that 80% of the land in Italy was owned by just 20% of the population. So a lot of people looked at this kind of so-called 80-20 rule, and they found that it kind of permeates our society in a lot of areas too, particularly in business. They found that a lot of times in small businesses, 80% of the income comes from 20% of the customers, 80% of the complaints come from 20% of the customers, and so on. So, how I got exposed to this 80-20 rule was back in the late 1980s, I owned three different businesses. I had two electronics businesses and a wedding photography business, wedding portrait photography. And one of my electronics businesses was bleeding money. And I really never took uh, a college course or anything like that. I never even read a business book, uh, <laughs> despite owning three businesses. So I promptly took a college course, and I started reading some business books. And in one of the business books, and for the life of me, I cannot remember what book it was, it mentioned that 80% of the time spent in a small business is is uh, only produces 20% of the income, meaning 80% of the time your employees are doing stuff only produces 20% of the income. And what I did was I looked at the business and I found that the employees were all working really hard. It was you know, not their fault, but what I had them doing was only producing 20% of the business's income. So I realigned the business and made it such that what they did really more directly affected the bottom line and the business started to succeed. So emboldened by that, I started applying it to my other businesses and I looked at my wedding photography business, which was doing really, really well. I had a wedding every Saturday and I had probably one Friday every month. So very, very busy, doing well, I charged good money. I think my, um, my cheapest package was $2,500. So in like 1988, that's quite a bit of money. But you got to remember though, um, back then we shot film, so we had more cost. We had to buy the film, we had to get it processed and things like that. But still, $2,500 was pretty good money for the cheapest package. What I found was, almost always, whatever package the bride and groom bought, they ended up spending double that when all was said and done. Meaning if they bought that $2,500 package, when all was said and done, all the images were delivered, they wrote a check to me for the, their checks total $5,000 because they purchased extra prints, extra books, things like that. So I looked and I wanted to see exactly what they were buying. And what kind of stuck out first was what they weren't buying. What I did was, is on all three packages I had, I would go to the bride's home and I would take pictures of her getting ready with her mother and father and the girls in the wedding. They rarely would buy any of those images. They appreciated me going there and taking the images, but they rarely would buy them extra. You wouldn't sell an extra 8x10 or 16x20 of that. So I eliminated that from all three packages and I made it an add-on. If they wanted me to do that, that cost extra. The other thing I looked at, um, I was spending a lot of time uh, with these very uh, arty shots of rings, you know, hands with rings with champagne glasses and candles and star filters. Back then we had star filters because of our, we shot film. Um, a lot of fancy shots with the wedding cake. Uh, rarely did they buy any of that extra. So uh, I still took some sh wedding ring shots and shots of the cake, but I didn't sweat it. I didn't really spend a lot of time making sure that it was perfectly artistically done because they weren't selling anyway, so why worry about it? What I found that they purchased were, uh, they always purchased the shot of them, uh, the bride and groom kissing at the altar, always. And 
usually you could only fire off one shot. So what I did was is I told my bride and grooms to hold the kiss until they heard three clicks on my camera, or if people were applauding, they'd hear me cough when I was done. And that sound, might sound ridiculous, but it worked out beautifully. Uh, what I did was, is as soon as they start to kiss, I took a, a wide horizontal, which got the entire altar, them, and the people that were uh, in the crowd. Then I quickly zoomed in and took a horizontal, which pretty much got the altar and them. And then I moved in and got a vertical of pretty much just them. So it was very quickly done, you know, click, click, click. And, you know, I'd cough and they'd stop and then they'd come walking down the aisle. Um, the other thing I found is that pictures of, uh, with their grandparents, they always purchased those. And I really wasn't concentrating on getting too many of those shots. So I made sure I always got the bride with their grandma, the bride with their grandpa, the bride with the grandma and grandpa, the gr bride and groom with the grandma, bride and groom, and so on, and on both sides. you know. And what I found is the parents of the bride and groom often bought those images because they wanted pictures of their parents with their daughter or their son. So I made sure I, I saturated their proofs with a lot of pictures with grandma and grandpa. Uh, the other thing, any kids in the wedding, they always purchase stuff extra with kids. So if the kids were in the wedding, I made sure I got it with the bride, with the groom, with the bride and groom, the kids alone, kids, if they had a, a ring bearer and a flower girl together um, uh, with their parents. A lot of times, you know, they weren't, you know, they're whatever, you know, so I got a lot of different images with the kids. A lot of times though, kids aren't in the wedding, but they might be a, a beloved nephew or niece of the bride and groom. So I'd make sure I got those um, pictures also. So started selling more, um, really. I just went through and I think I started approaching uh, tripling what a package was. So uh, that $2,500 package, they were spending close to you know seven, $8,000, um, you know, when all was said and done. And so it's really easy for you to do if you have a photography business to go through and see exactly what is selling and what isn't selling. And again, it's not necessarily an 80-20 like uh, distribution. The main thing is, is you're thinking is that it's, it's two numbers. One is really small and one is really big. So you're selling a lot more money. You're making a lot more money from very few images. You want to increase those few images so you can make more money. Um, so if you're a portrait photographer, uh, is there a certain light setup that seems to sell more readily than the others? Is there a um, certain background that sells more than others? Um, things like that. If you're lifestyle photography and you go to various places throughout the town to take images, is there a specific spot in a park that seems to sell better than other parts? Things like that. Go through and get an idea of what's selling. Now you need kind of a body of work to begin with to do this, so you have to be fairly established doing it for a little while. But at least, even if you're starting out from the get-go, keep this in mind and see what's selling and keep that in mind. Because I was numb to this. I was doing weddings for a few years and was really numb to what wasn't selling and what was selling. And um, that really will help you with your business. I, I truly believe it will help you. Now, if you're not a professional photographer, you're just a photographer, now it becomes a little more esoteric, meaning you have to look at your images and get an idea of what gives you satisfaction and what isn't. <laughs> what gives other people satisfaction, meaning when other people look at your images, do they seem to like more of your images, a certain type of image more so than others? Um, do you post all your images on Flickr? Look at Flickr and see which ones get more likes. Okay, it seems like all my low-key images are getting more likes than my other images or something like that. So like I said, it's a little more esoteric. It might be a little uh, more difficult for you to determine what is um, more popular and what is less popular and whether or not then you have to make the, the decision. Do you want to concentrate on the more popular um, types of images? It might be something you don't care to do. So that's really up to you. But that will give you an idea. You could look even throughout like um, the main uh, thing people talk about is gear. Usually <laughs> we get 80% um, of our images come from 20% of our gear, and that's true. 
and you might want to downsize. You might be at the point where you have all this gear and you just could sell 80% of it and you know use the money to buy um, your significant other something nice, you know, something like that. So, um, like I said, it might be a little more esoteric if you're not a professional with the business, but I think you could get an idea of some way it could apply to you and how it could help you. All right, give it a go. If you have any thoughts on that, um, you know, drop me an email or if you're watching this on YouTube, leave it in the description or in the uh, comments below and uh, share it with everyone else. Now, for the next episode of Photography is My Passion, I think we'll continue with the wedding photography vein and I'll talk about wedding photography a little bit and some marketing ideas and things that might help you with your wedding photography business. Now, if you have any suggestions on future episodes of Photography is My Passion, don't hesitate to email me at tony at anthonymorganti.com and we'll do an episode uh, on anything, really. I'm getting a lot of requests about back button focusing, so that will definitely be in an upcoming episode as well. But in the next episode, we will talk about wedding photography some more. All right, that's it for this episode of Photography is My Passion. Thank you for watching. Take care.